Some projects will challenge the status quo and push boundaries. Others, though, will change the face of the planet. In 1914, the Panama Canal revolutionized shipping and travel by letting boats cut right through Central America. But in 2014, 100 years later, Nicaragua began its plan for the Grand Interoceanic Canal. This artificial waterway would rival the Panama Canal and cut across the country in two different places, beginning in Punto Brito and ending in Punto Gordoa. The canal would offer an alternative route to traveling with goods across the planet. But instead of one stream going across the entire country, it would cut into Lake Nicaragua. Ships would traverse the peaceful waters and land on the other side, where the second canal would take them over the ocean. Unfortunately, the businessman financing this gigantic endeavor, Wang Jing, entered severe hardship after the Chinese stock market crash in 2015. And this project requires more than a few thousand shovels and elbow grease. An engineer proposed the idea of creating a 400 square kilometer artificial lake to fill the locks needed. It sounds like a lot of work, but this way, it keeps the waters of Lake Nicaragua intact and protected. Russia expressed interest in helping build this monster waterway, but the canal remains just a dream. Depending on who you ask, that could be for the best. The engineering firm HKND said it could employ around 50,000 people to make this vision come to life. That ongoing work could change people's lives. Unfortunately, according to an environmental impact assessment report, the project could also relocate 30,000 people who live in the canal's path. And who knows how it could affect wildlife like jaguars, tapirs, and countless other species living in Nicaragua's dense jungles. While the engineering firm is long since gone, the government isn't willing to admit defeat yet. So one day, this waterway might still see the light of day. But follow that shining light, and you'll come to a mega project that would revolutionize power grids. Welcome to the Tunisian Solar Park. Located in the vast Sahara Desert, the power collected from these solar panels would power Malta, Italy, and France. The 5 billion euro plant would link Africa to Europe with underwater cables, drastically reducing the power supply provided by Russia. How would it do that? With hundreds of thousands of parabolic mirrors. These devices would redirect sunlight into towers over 200 meters tall. Inside the towers, the heat builds up, molting sand that broils water to generate steam. And that steam activates turbines that would generate enough power to provide almost two million homes in Europe. Even more impressive, this ambitious structure would employ 20,000 people from Tunisia and Malta. The water would be wastewater from a date plantation, so resources would not be drained from the locals. Like the canal, not everyone is on board with this project, which many say would put the land under the control of private companies instead of local tribes. And if the power harnessed in the middle of the desert changed the electrical grid as we know it, we could use it to power the cities of the future. Cities like the proposed Cloud City in Shenzhen, China, for example. This visionary project would be unlike anything else found on Earth. The city would be a dense green city built to give back to the environment while still towering above the clouds with magnificent skyscrapers and incredible vistas. How will they do that? Cloud Citizen would be one connected megastructure, a sprawling metropolis with suspended public spaces and integrating business and home life. With buildings around 680 meters tall, this city would feature public places in the form of parks that would be like a green lung. These spaces would encourage communication and healthy lifestyles. Three interlocking towers would make up the bulk of this city, located along the Pearl River Delta. The surface area would be just under the size of Monaco, the second smallest country in the world. But Cloud Citizen wouldn't just be a massive strip mall. This structure would be a self-contained city within a city. The buildings would harvest rainwater and use the latest green technology to collect power from the sun, wind, and even algae. Sheltered areas would store food production modules and provide sanctuary for wild plants. Even if you never left the futuristic urban cityscape of Cloud Citizen, you could remain close to nature within these walls. While China is looking to start construction on this marvel soon, many specifics are still to be discussed and addressed. So if you want more details, you'll have to travel over to India. Here, 
you'll discover smart cities taking advantage of the world's latest technology and systems that have yet to be invented. If the pandemic taught us anything, it's that the infrastructure of legacy cities are outdated and due for reform. India plans to address this issue with sprawling cities that run more efficiently, with sustainability at the forefront of this innovation. Dolera, India's first smart city, aims to fix these problems. This project will create a metropolis twice the size of Delhi and six times the size of Shanghai. This city will link Delhi and Mumbai, creating a corridor between the largest cities in India and a pathway into tomorrow. Connectivity is the key to the city's success. In a country where only 3% of homes have internet access, Dalera plans to connect every home within its boundaries to the web. When you think of India's city streets, you typically envision overcrowded alleyways and, and never-ending traffic jams. But with digital crowd control, these are problems of the past in Dolera. The city will try to eliminate traffic jams, pollution, mobs of people, and litter. That's an ambitious goal for any city, and the price tag doesn't come cheap. It could cost as much as $20 billion to have the hardware, software, and services needed to keep this city running and connected. Every bit of infrastructure would be linked together in a system never built before, from the international airport to the highways and the homes within. And the buildings of Dolera will be created with materials to help mitigate climate change. Engineers will strive to decarbonize the city, keeping energy waste low by using sustainable materials and automating their systems management. The goal is to have these buildings meet the Paris Accords, to be net zero carbon by 2050. Waste management will also be automated, with sensors used to optimize collections citywide. In addition, city planners will improve the use of packaging and create waste-to-energy solutions. If this project succeeds, India will build 23 other smart cities, totally changing the urban landscape for the entire planet. But some people want to change the landscape of the entire countryside. When you think of the Netherlands, you probably have visions of Amsterdam and counterculture. But Thies Zonneveld dreams of building an artificial mountain in his native home. And unlike the other projects on this list, this began as a joke. After the cycling journalist watched Dutch riders crash and fail to place in the grueling Tour de France, he joked that the Netherlands should build a mountain for other cyclists to train. But then he took another look at the flat land outside the window and thought, why not? And after he published a tongue-in-cheek article, the writer was flooded with emails that didn't share his sense of humor. They were serious about building a mountain in the serene Dutch landscape. The people didn't want some easy hill to climb either. No, studies went forth to create a two kilometer high mountain. This monster would take up to 7.7 .7 billion cubic meters of sand. All that mass would weigh 12.6 billion tons. And that amount of sand and dirt would push down the surrounding area by 100 meters and affect ground levels up to 50 kilometers away. All this material and effect would cost up to seven trillion euros. That price tag made everyone adjust their expectations a bit. They settled on a 500 meter high mountain with a hollow structure instead. And inside it would hold vertical agriculture and housing. And for all you sports enthusiasts, don't worry, the engineers didn't forget about you. The inclines on the outside would sustain waterfalls, ski slopes, and plenty of hairpin turns for the cyclists. Unfortunately, in 2013, an economic crisis hit the Netherlands hard, and the plans were scrapped, for now. But the spirit of the Dutch lives on, and who knows, maybe this artificial mountain will someday rise from the ground. What's your favorite project on the list? Did we miss your favorite? Let us know in the comments, and make sure to like this video and subscribe for the most innovative megastructures known to humanity in the next episode. Thanks for watching.